Okay. Yeah, because nothing, well, let's say that used to be a true statement. It's true enough uh, to be a, an excellent response. Nothing times itself is a negative. <coughs> you can't multiply a number by itself and get a negative. Um, so we say positive 2 times positive 2 equals positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 equals positive 4. You can't get a negative 4. And those are our only ideas. Right? We need two identical numbers. Multiply together, <coughs> get 4. So to be more specific, though, not nothing. It's not nothing. It's no real number. Question is what kind of number can be the square root of a negative number? What kind of number? What's that? Imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers. Okay. What's what? So in the real numbers, the real numbers, one is the the unit, right? It's the base of everything else. Uh, we take one, and then we can add one, we get two. We can add another one, we get three. Or we can take the original one and divide it by three and get a new number, and we can multiply it by three and get a new number there, right? Like we, we start with one and we start putting it to ones with other ones and then taking those new numbers and combining them and we get all the numbers. Um, so if one's the basis of the real numbers, what's the basis of the imaginary numbers? What is that? Negative one. Uh, the square root of negative one, which is i. Why do we call it I? Imaginary starts with I. Why use a letter to represent this? Why don't we just write the square root of negative one? Takes longer. Takes longer. I gotta imagine that's a that's the motivation for a lot of the things that we write in math. We want to write less. Okay? So square root of negative one, which is I, that's the basis of all imaginary numbers. So if we get to this point and we're going to take the square root of both sides. Now this side is clearly z, it's the square root of z. <coughs> I'm gonna write this using imaginary numbers somehow, right? How are we gonna utilize imaginary numbers to rewrite this square root? Plus or minus two. Plus or minus two i. Because we could write this as the square root of negative one, always the square root of negative one, pull that to the side, right? Factor that out. Times the square root of Of positive four, because negative times positive is negative. You get that negative four in there. Uh, square root of negative one is called i. Square root of four is two. There we go. Imaginary numbers. Good. Given imaginary numbers, at least yeah, given imaginary numbers, given square roots of negative numbers. And now we're gonna put imaginary numbers together. Well, complex numbers. You okay? <laughs> All right, so we got uh, three complex numbers. We'll multiply them together. Uh, Kate, we had Jack here, and Kate here. Why is Kate not completely finished in her last step? So what is it about this last step where she's just not quite done? Write it down. Yellow and orange. I made you feel comfortable with the fact that that is negative one. And 
If that's negative 1, then I do the third is I squared times I. I squared is negative 1, so negative 1 times I makes negative I. Negative I. So I have 120I. What's next? What's this? Minus 1. Negative 125. This? Minus 30I. Now we have uh, negative 125. We write the, uh, the real number first, usually, and then we'll combine the imaginary parts together. 120i minus 30i, 90i. Locke has not found the correct value of C. Here's his work. Here's that work. So Locke's final multiplication is incorrect. He should do this is what he got. It's hard to see. This is the end of the So he got, yeah, it's very good. You're handing out some nuts. Nice clock work. What's wrong with that? He just got it, and why did he get what he got? He forgot to multiply the denominator. It's common. It's not really a completing the square mistake. It's a multiplying fractions mistake. When you multiply fractions, you multiply them by multiplying straight across in the numerator and denominator. Sometimes people confuse multiplication with addition, and they say, oh, it's common denominators. And Multiply them together, or multiply the numerators and denominators together. Okay. Um, how did he come up with this? X minus 13 over 2, X minus 13 over 2. How did that go? <coughs> he was, uh, yeah, well, yes, he was taking, he was looking at X squared minus 13X. And that informed him that he should wind up with x minus 13 ha halves times x minus 13 halves. Why? Why is that? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Seven halves out of 13. Um, yes. This six, number. Six, 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 what? Six and a half. Whoa. I'm pretty much relying on you to, to tell me what I know about. Uh, six and a half is half of 13. Um, so, why do we need half of 13? It's not what we do. <laughs> why do we do it? Yeah. Add adds together to make negative 13. And now lots of na numbers add up to negative 13, don't they? Yeah. They have to be the same number. Okay, they need to be the same number. Why do they need to be the same number? Why do these two have to be identical? Answer that question. So it's a perfect square. So we get to write x minus 13 halves squared. Why? Why do we want to do that? So we can use the square root. Yes. Okay. So then we find c because if, if we know this is how it factors, that's when we multiply it together, it doesn't give us just that, x squared minus 13x, right? We'll get x squared from x times x, and we'll get negative 13 times x and negative 13 times x. Those will, those will add together by negative 13x. But then we'll also get a number, right? Where do we get that number from? Multiplying. Multiplying the two numbers together, and that's what Locke has done here. Just did it incorrectly. But he knew he didn't multiply. Side of your handout. 
Sawyer has solved this quadratic equation incorrectly. Here's his work. In this first step, right here, marked with an arrow, what has Sawyer forgotten? Sawyer forgotten. Write it down. Write up your new writing range. The idea here is that we engage as many different types, like parts of the brain as possible. You're hearing me talk. I'm trying to get you to talk and say it verbally. Uh, you're seeing me write. You're writing yourself. You're reading. Oh, so many different parts of your brain involved. Methodology here. He just he's just maybe recognized that 86 is not the perfect C value. Just scoops it over. That's all right. We can scoot. Scooting is allowed. Um, and he finds 81. Okay, and we'll discuss if 81 is uh, correct. But I mean, if he adds 81, you can see it's new because it's written in brown. Everything else is in pink. What's he forgotten to do, Cheyenne? Uh, add 81 to both sides. Yes. He's introduced this new 81 on the left side. He can't just do it on the left side. He's got to also keep it in balance. The cardinal sin of algebra is to throw the, the equation out of balance. That's the most basic idea. Don't throw it out of balance. So uh, what he didn't do, he didn't add 81 to both sides. He added it to the left side only. OK. So let's take a break before we, we do this. We'll just. Complete Sawyer's work directly. Um, x squared minus 18x plus 81 plus 86 equals 0 plus 81 is 81. Okay, I'm going to start from there. So that's the, the golden goose right there. We want to uh, write it in such a way that we can factor it so that it's a perfect square. Factor is x minus 9 squared. Is that correct? Does this factor is x minus 9 squared? Yes. Nope. How can we be sure? Uh, 9 equals 9 squared. Yeah, because it's half. Half is the pattern where utilizing really the truth that this factor, this is the factorization is that is that we can multiply this together and get that, right? So, so negative 9 minus uh, 9 is going to be negative 18. And negative 9 times negative 9 will be 81. We could go there. So we still have a plus 86. And that all still equals 81. What's that? Subtract, Subtract 86. We want to get the square thing by itself. Negative 5 on that side. Square root. Here it is. Big payoff. We take the square root. That was the big idea. x minus 9 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5. How do we write the square root of negative 5? Uh, I equals the square root of negative 5. Yes, i root 5. Whenever you have the square root of a negative number, you can always write i times the square root of <coughs> The positive, whatever that number is. Square root of negative 5 is i root 5. Square root of negative 7 is i root 7. You get it. Okay. And if this could be simplified, we'd simplify it, but we can't. What's i? Square root of, square root of negative 1. Don't forget that. That's what it is. Not a variable. Not an unknown. Nothing you solve for. It is a number. It's in the imaginary unit. All right. Want to get x by itself? Add 9. Add 9 to both sides. x equals 9 plus or minus i root. Get imaginary stuff. Okay, here is the question. Um, or here's a question. So what we what we saw Sawyer do is just scooch. He just scooched 86 over and made room for the 81. It's 81 and a half. That's not the only way you can do it. How else could you, or how else could Sawyer handle the 86? Yes? So subtract 5 from both sides? Now if you start here, knowing that, now that we know that this should be 81 instead of 86, subtract 5 from 86, you get 81. Yeah. Just subtract 5 from the other side. And you'll get, guess what, negative 5 on this side and perfect square on this side. Other ideas? You can subtract 86 from both sides right away. You'll have that. That'll be very similar. Any other ways we can handle that? No, the only other one that 
people don't seem to do very often is, it's very similar to subtracting five from both sides, just kind of separating 86 into 81 plus five. That's 86, right? And now you have the 81, and you're still gonna subtract five from both sides. But the way you should do it is the way that made the most sense to you. If you like to scooch things over like Sawyer does, you like to subtract 86, uh, or you like to subtract five from both sides like Amy does, whatever it is that you think makes the most sense, you should do it. Um, and do it every time. So lots of different ways. Subtract uh, five in the shorthand there from both sides. Uh, subtract 86 from both sides. Split up 86 and 81 plus five. Do whatever. Saeed. Huh? Where did you get these names? Paper. Oh, I need to pass out the papers. Uh, where, where am I getting these names? Like <laughs> Wasp. <laughs> mean that there's nothing else with k squared, just k squared, one times k squared. It's not a half times k squared, not two times k squared, but just k squared. So the whole thing is to get one times k squared. And if it's x, one times x squared, whatever. To do completing the square, we've got to get a one in front of the squared term. Otherwise, writing these two identical factors becomes quite a chore. If we, if we started with 2k squared plus 16k, and we wanted to get two identical factors, you might think that we do like k plus 4, and, uh, or k plus 8, and k plus 8. Well, that's not going to work, though. We are going to get our 16k, but we're not going to get 2k squared. We're going to get just k squared. Okay. And remember, they have to be identical factors, so you have to find a number that's like, that is the exact same number that you multiply by itself to get 2 number can you multiply by itself to get two? One times one is one, not two times two is four, some decimal, point, one point something, see what I'm saying? If we could just call it the square root of two, that's kind of easier. 
But then that messes up the eights, right? Now I get eight times the square root of two and eight times the square root of two, and that's not gonna be 16 anymore. So this just becomes a real bear, right? We don't like bears. Take our bear safety class. Nature National Park. We all know, stay away from bears. So we stay away from that bear. We get one k squared. Um, in Saeed's first line, right here, his first handwritten line, you got negative six, you got negative six over there, because you divided by two. And the next line is 10, it goes from negative six to 10. What's going on there? Write it down. What's going on there? In that first handwritten line, we've got a negative six. In the next line, there's a 10. What happened there? Why did you go from negative six to 10? What happened? Why did you go from negative six to ten? Yes. Um, like we do the seven part, the four times four equals sixteen or something. Ah, so we know how this should factor because we know four plus four needs to be eight. Mm -hmm. But this isn't the factor form of this. When we factor, or when we write these two factors, the reality is the four times the four should give us sixteen, mm -hmm. right? So this is k squared plus eight k plus sixteen. That's what this is. So we've, we've got a, an extra plus 16 on this side, so we add 16 on this side, all in one move, right? One swift move. Um, we added 16 to both sides. What? Nothing. <laughs> Anything else? Any questions from either Therese or the homework? Yes? Um, can you do 64 on the one Yeah. 64. Is that the word problem? Uh, skateboard shop sells 50 skateboards per week, about. Uh, for the price advertised, there's the price advertised. For a $1 decrease in price, about one more skateboard per week is sold, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, let's say, we'll, we'll just change it from skateboards so we don't get confused. Let's say you sell... Uh, Pens, 
sell pencils. For, for what? For three dollars a piece. What? What? You sell them for three dollars a piece, and let's say you sell uh, a hundred and two of them a week. Because they're very expensive. Okay, so I, if you sell 102 of them at three dollars a piece, how many do you make? How much would you make that week? How'd you figure that out? Multiply the cost per pencil times the number of pencils, right? Right. So cost. Let's just call it the cost per, right? Cost per whatever the thing is. You take that and you multiply by the number of items, right? Whatever those items are. Agreed? You don't know how much you made in a week. That's what you do. Okay. Well, currently, right now, how much money do they make in a week on skateboards? Per skateboard. 70 per skateboard. 50 skateboards per week. So right now they're making 70 times 50. 3,500. But they're talking about reducing the price by a dollar and then selling how much more? One more skateboard a week, okay? Uh, so it's a nice one-to-one -one relationship. If you decrease the, the, the cost by one, you gain one more customer. Why would you gain one more customer? Cheaper. And they're like, hey, I was not going to buy it for 70 but since it's $69, I'm going to get one of those. Okay? <laughs> so you get more customers. And if you, if you sell it for 68 now two more people. Well, 69 is too much for me. 68, though, that's exactly how much I have. So I'm going to buy one of those. So you get two more customers. Maybe you take out another dollar. You get another, right? Three more now. Um, and so you sell that many more. So you start making more money, right? For a while. Until what? Like it costs zero dollars and you're losing all your money, right? Uh, you're making so little on every skateboard that it doesn't matter how many people are buying it, you're not making any money. Okay. Um, well, so they're talking about taking the price and subtracting, well, a variable number of dollars, right? X dollars. And that means that they will sell. Well, it's lucky that we reduce one dollar and we gain one customer, right? We sell one more. So the number of dollars that we charge is less, you know, is 70 minus however many dollars we want to subtract. And the number of boards we sell is 50 plus the same number of dollars that we subtracted from the price of each board. So that's where this equation comes from, y equals that. So it says use the vertex form to find how the shop can maximize weekly revenue. Is this the vertex form of? No. What is it? What form is it? Basically, if we wanted to know how many skateboards they would have to sell to make zero dollars in a week, right? we find out. We can easily find out where this function equals zero, so that we can find out where uh, they're, they're making zero dollars per week. That's useless. We don't want to know that. We want to make the most money, right? This is going to be a parabola. If we graph it, where will we find the place where they make the most money on the parabola? The what? The vertex. In this case, it says that it is the same as Yours. Okay. So the vertex is where you're going to find it, so we're going to put it in vertex form and make the vertex easy to find. Well, to do that, we need to use completing the square. To use completing the square, we need something in standard form, so the one x squared. So we're going to multiply these out. We get 70 times 50, that's 3,500. And then we get uh, 70x minus 50x, that's an x, minus x squared, y equals. Uh, let's say negative x squared, let's put that first, that's what we're used to, plus 20x plus 3500. We've completed the square so many times, we know we're going to concentrate on just 
those two right there. Right? Um, but as we attempt to complete the square on these two, what do you notice is different about this compared to all the other ones that we've done? Negative. And a negative x squared, we don't want that. We want a positive x squared. Okay. So you might normally just say, well, divide both sides by negative 1. And, but this side's a y. And we don't want negative y. We want to leave this as y equals. So here's what we do. We're just going to take these two terms, undistribute a negative 1, factor out a negative x squared minus 20x. We don't have to do it to 3,500 because we can just scooch, do the old scooch Sawyer move. Right, leave a blank spot to, to get the perfect square trinomial here. And we've scooched 3,500 over here. All right, so what, what do we want right there so we get perfect factorization? A thousand, if he's a little bit off by a factor of ten. A hundred, if we divide this by two, we get ten, or negative ten. And negative ten times negative ten is a hundred. Okay, so this part's working out great. X minus ten squared, right? Negative ten plus negative ten is negative twenty. X negative ten times negative ten is a hundred. Okay, now, but hold on, because we just added a hundred where there wasn't a hundred before. That would, if we left it that way, it would leave it every, everything's out of balance, right? It's all out of whack. Yeah. And really, we don't want to do anything to this side. We just want to leave it as y. Okay. So on this side, we added 100. Um, let me use a, a simpler example. Uh, 5x, right? Let's, let's, let's just say we start off with something. And let's say we add 100. But now we've changed it. We don't want it to be, we want it to stay equal to 5x. So what could we also do that would kind of counteract that since we have 100? Subtract, it. Subtract 100 at the same time. So plus 100, minus 100, nothing happens. But now we could like do stuff with this if we wanted to. So um, we do a similar thing. We added 100 in our idea, but we would subtract 100 right, to this side. The only thing is that, that, that makes this a little bit tricky is that this 100 is inside of parentheses is multiplied by a negative. Right? So to this side, do we really add 100 to the side, to the side of the equation? We really subtracted 100. Right? So you've got to distribute that down. So we've subtracted 100. So to balance out the subtracting 100, we should add 100. So we get plus 3,600. Now it's in vertex form. What? It wasn't even bad at all. Okay. So where's the vertex of this parabola if we were to graph it? What? <laughs> Ten? Subtract ten dollars from the cost of your skateboard. Sell it for sixty dollars. Also, ten refers to refers to this x also, right? So you're going to expect to sell ten more boards. Charge ten less dollars. Expect to sell ten more boards. And that's not what I want. And make. $3,600 is the most money you can expect to make with uh, skateboards in that scenario. Um, there it is. It doesn't say graph it or anything like that. It says find the maximum. Yeah. Um, 53 on both sides. 53 on both points.
All right, so we're supposed to figure out what they did wrong. Sometimes the best way to figure out what they did wrong is you do it right and see if they did wrong, and you do it side by side. So don't look at theirs and try to figure out the mistake. Not always the best idea. 4x squared, 24x minus 11 equals 0. OK, so let's concentrate here. We'll do our first step, see if their first step looks uh, good. Looks ours. OK, so what's the first thing you would do? That? Divide by 4. Divide by 4, OK. So x squared plus 6x minus 11 over 4 equals 0. Let's see. <coughs> oh, they're doing it a little differently. How did they do it differently? Factor it out of four. They did it divide by four. Okay, so that we, we should we should proceed that way. Yeah. But it's the same idea, right? Yeah. Like inside the parentheses, we get that one x squared like we want. Okay. So dividing by four, that's what I would do. We we should kind of follow along with them. So let's make sure that, that this was done correctly. They uh, how they why is eleven over here? Yeah. Add eleven. Is that correct? Did I do that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Let's factor. Let, let's add eleven to both sides, and we'll factor a four out of here. Right, that means that if we distribute a 4 into this parentheses on the left side, we can get that. So what should we write down here? x plus 6x. Plus 6x. If we distribute 4, 4x squared, 24x, <coughs> add 11 to both sides. Okay, we're good. So forget about them over there. Let's complete the square ourselves right here. So we need to find, let's find this guy right here. know that uh, we should wind up with x plus 3 squared. Okay, let's go back up here though. So we add the 9. We add the nine. Um, so how are we going to keep this balance? Subtract the 9. Subtract, we can subtract the 9 in here. Um, or you can do the same thing to both sides. So we could add a 9 to both sides. Okay. So if I add a 9 though, does that really keep it balanced? No. Uh, does anyone just press Y? What's that? Yeah, because this 9 is not really worth 9. It's actually worth 4 times 9. Because inside of parentheses, it's being multiplied by a 4. So you'd have to distribute the 4 to figure out what, that, what that's actually worth. Okay. So on this side, we've, we've added 9 inside the parentheses, but to this side entirely, we've actually added 36. Add 36. Well, that certainly seems like a mistake that could have happened. Let's we'll see. Look at that. They added 9. We didn't add 36. So there's their mistake. Um, so this is uh, 47. Right, and then we divide by 4 on both sides. X plus 3 squared equals 47 <coughs> over 4. Square root of both sides, x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 47 over 2, because we take the square root of 47 over the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 47 over 2. So they did everything really well. They just neglected to remember that the 9 is inside of the 2. Okay, let's 
about how much we have time for, so let's pass in our report, please. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. most likely not the perfect value of c to make the perfect square. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of it. Next. So by this you mean do this? Yeah. This should be? X minus 5. X times X minus 5. Plus 25. So you know that when you multiply this out, you would get a plus 25, which needs to be put here. Also, oh, add to the other side. Add to the other side. So that equals 28. Yeah. It could not be going more smoothly right now. Square root. Square root. Yeah. Take the square root of both sides. So x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root times the square root. Why, why am I writing two square roots? Because you're going to do because 28 doesn't have square root. Four times seven yeah. is twenty-eight. We can get them all in square roots. Square root of four is two. We call it <laughs> simplified. X minus five equals plus or minus two root seven. X equals five plus or minus two root seven. Kind of jump the gun on that one, but hey, just added five to both sides. It's a beautiful, beautiful process that we all work together to do. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Um, 31. 3s squared plus 6s plus 9 equals 0. What's the first thing we might do? First best thing we can think of doing? Divide by three. Divide by three. Divide by three. S squared plus two S plus three equals zero. Subtract three. S squared plus two S equals negative three. Minus what? ones? My plus one. S plus one times S plus one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Equal. Yeah. So we added two S. Plus two? Yeah. No. Plus one. Why one? Why plus one? Oh. One times one. One times one is one. Time to one, is one. Son of a gun. Right. Add one to both sides. Minus two. Oh, okay. You get negative oh two gosh. there. Square root. Every time we do this part, like little confetti should shoot out. Take the square root. Every time we see the square root, it explodes with confetti. I should hook up pyrotechnics. Smoke. Oh my god. That would ruin the ceiling. S plus. 
plus one no one equals okay. plus or minus. What's the square root of negative two? Mm. I. 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 Root. You can write root two i. What's the danger? Of, what is the big, big, scary danger of writing root two i? You might think it's inside the. You might think i is inside the square root. How horrible would that be if you mm. thought that? That's pretty bad. S equals negative one plus or minus i root two. Okay. Would you say that now there are differences which would you say that this problem that we did and this problem that we did are similar yes. mm -hmm. and that they have similar steps? Yes. Yes, they are similar. They have similar steps. We come out with different solutions. These are complex. These were real. Um, some, if we do another one, the solutions might be even nicer. They might not have square roots in them. They come out to be whole numbers or integers. Um, they might come out to be fractions. But the, the steps that we do, we could, we could do the same steps every time. We could almost close our eyes and tell someone doing it like, hey, divide by the number in front of x squared. Okay, now uh, move the constant to the other side. Okay, now uh, you know, find the, the perfect value of c to make it a perfect square trinomial. It's the same thing every time, right? Yeah. Okay, so that motivates us, uh, in at least in mathematics, the mathematical world, when we notice there's a pattern like that. Rather than doing that every time, over and over and over, um, we'll take and write what's called a, a literal equation, which means um, We'll use, let me use this one as an example. We say, every time I see a quadratic equation like this, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, I solve it exactly the same way. Different numbers, the same way of solving it. Right? Uh, so we solve this equation with its, its letters in here for the numbers that we normally we say, well, if I can just uh, boil down all that process into like one big expression, then I'll have basically a formula for finding the solution to any quadratic equation that I can write as ax squared plus bx plus c. And then all I need to know is a, b, and c, plug them in this big expression, and out come the solutions. That's what we're going to do. Now, I could just show you how to use this quadratic formula, yeah. but that would be late. Um, also, it's a new <coughs> it's a new state standard that in algebra one, okay, let alone algebra two. I mean, algebra two is just further along than algebra one. In algebra one, you need to be able to derive this formula to do what we're about to do. Okay, so certainly in algebra two, we're going to expect you to know how to do that too. It's not going to be complex thing, the thing that gets in the way is just keeping everything straight. Okay, uh, When fractions are involved and they're all letters instead of numbers, uh, we just need to pay closer attention. Right? Here, we, we did this and we didn't have much difficulty. That was pretty good. We at least got really close uh, on an individual basis. And as a class, we can move right through that. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to do it with numbers in or letters in place of the numbers. So here we go. What was the first thing we did here? Divide by 4 so that we get a 1 in front of x squared. So we're going to do the same thing here. We need to divide by a. Okay. So we divide everything by a. So everything is letters, not numbers? Right. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Why? Because I was bad enough. You were like, crap. So we're just going to do it. We're just going to do it later the more you're talking. So we might as well do it now rather than later. Okay, divide everything by a. x squared, right? We divided this by 4, we got x squared. Then we divided this by 4, so we'll divide this by 4. Or not 4, but a. b divided by a times x. Plus whatever c divided by a is. Equals 0. You take it one little step at a time. It won't be that big a deal. First thing we want to do is get a 1x squared, so we did that. We divided everything by a. So, in a specific example with specific numbers, this is the point where we're at x squared minus 10x minus 3. Right now we're at x squared plus whatever this divided by a was, plus whatever this divided by a was. 
and that's still we divide zero by a. It doesn't matter what a was. We still have zero over here. What did we do now? In this example, what did we do next? Added three. Added three. We moved that constant that we know we're not going to want, or most likely not going to. Maybe it is the right number. Right? If this were a 25, then we'd be all set up. But usually it's not. Right? Usually that's not the right number. So go ahead and subtract c over a from both sides. x squared b over a times x equals, now 0 minus c over a is just negative c. Okay, so that's where we're at right here, right? Before we got to 25, somehow we found this 25. How did we do that? Yeah, we, we figured out how this would have to factor, and then when we knew how that would factor, that told us that there was a 25 here. So this, right, we're going to get a square factor. Right, we know we're going to have x. We know we're going to get a positive number, so it'll be plus. How do we find this number? Divide. Divide. Divide by two. Divide this by two. You take half of this, right? So you took negative seven. Divided by two, we got negative five. Okay. So it just has a little side. We're going to take b over a and divide it by two, and we divide fractions by other numbers. It gets kind of easy to get mixed up. Dividing instead of dividing fraction by a number, what? Multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the, by the reciprocal of two. So instead of mul instead of dividing by two, we can multiply by one half. One half. Multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. So half of b over a. That is b times one, right? Over two a, or a times two. We usually write those numbers first in the letter second. We got our factorization. Right? That's where we're right here. X minus five. We know that that has to be the, the two factors have to be x minus five and x minus five. What did we what did we decide next after we found that we had to have x minus five squared? Squared it to get twenty five. Get twenty five. So we'll just write that we add on b over two a squared whatever that is. We also have to do what? Add to the other side. Keep it balanced. So we got negative c over a over here, and we've got b over 2a squared. Okay. So this time we get the factorization that we want. This, like, if, if we take this number, if we have a one in front, and we take this number divided by two and square it, we've got a perfect square trinomial. That's completing the square. We said that last month in class. If we start out with something in front of a, we just need to take b divided by a first, then we take half of that, and there we go. We've got that perfect square. Whatever that is, we square it. There we go. We got negative c over a. Plus, now we should figure out what b over two a, b over two a finally squared is. What does it mean to square something? Multiply by, Multiply by itself. So we're going to take b over 2a times itself. So we're going to get b times b, b squared. 2a times 2a, 4a four four squared. Okay. We're going to leave this, we're going to do a, a step or two here. We're going to leave the left side alone. We're not going to do anything with that. We're going to just uh, clean up the right side here for a couple steps. So x plus b over 2a. Oh, sorry. Plus, plus x. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to clean it up, meaning we want to put these together. Put them together. To put these fractions together, what do we need? A common denominator. What's that, what, what's that common denominator going to be? A. A. That means we have to multiply this by something to get A. 4. 4A squared. Okay. What can we multiply this by to get 4A squared? Do they have the same denominator? By what? 
Fraction. So when you have the square root of a fraction, you can write square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Well, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that it's, it's hard to take the square root of something that has a plus or a minus in it. But can we take the square root of 4a squared? Can we find something that multiplies by itself to get 4a squared? 2 times a. 2a times 2a is 2 times 2 is 4, a times a is a squared. So this can be cleaned up a little bit, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And on this side we have x plus b over 2a. Almost done, almost got x by itself. What do we need to do to get x by itself? We're at like this stage right here. Subtract. Subtract b, b, over, b over 2a. 2A. X equals, oh, it's, uh, we should have been putting the plus or minus here because we took the square root. So minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. <coughs> One last thing. What do you notice about these two fractions? common denominator, so lucky us. We can just add them together, or we can combine them. So we have the common denominator of 2a, and here we have negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac. Seriously? This is, okay, so normally, historically, uh, students are given this formula without any backstory whatsoever. Okay, this is a formula, it's called the quadratic formula. And not surprisingly, it's a formula for solving quadratic equations. Solve quadratic equations with the quadratic formula. So like I said, historically, students are just given the quadratic formula, not being told exactly how it's uh, found. And I, as a student personally, didn't really like that, because it was just, here it is. It just does it. Okay. But we did it. We just used completing the square on every quadratic there ever could be. Like you put in A, B, the, the, the number of times x squared, B times x plus C, the constant. Okay. And then they're just showing how to use the quadratic formula. So now, problems in your homework are going to be using the quadratic formula, which is not very difficult. Let me show you how. Okay. Um, so x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. No, that's just the formula that we're going to use on this problem. Easy one. Twenty-nine. Five p 
squared uh, plus 40p plus 100 equals 25. Um, If p squared is sub x squared, we can just replace all the p's of x's if you want. Uh, the, the formula can become p equals all that stuff. All right, so the first thing that we need to do, and it's a really simple thing, notice when we started finding the quadratic formula, how did it start out looking? Zero. Equal to zero. So we just need to get it to be equal to zero. How are we going to get this to be equal to zero? All right, so we set it up so we can use the quadratic formula. So 75. Now all we need to know is what's A? Five, two, no, just five. It's just the number that you're multiplying by the square uh, variable. And B is? 40. And C is? 75. Be sure that if there's a negative in there, that you, like if this is a negative 40, <coughs> that B would be negative 40, so you carry those negatives through. So now we have A, B, and C. Look, A, B, and C just need to get plugged in to this quadratic formula. So P equals negative B, what's B? 40. 40 plus or minus the square root of B, 40, squared. Why is that not negative? <coughs> what's that? Is it negative or negative? No. Not inside there. Yeah. Minus 4 times A, 5, five times C, 75. Now a big common thing that happens with the quadratic formula is you have to write whole thing, all of that needs to get divided by 2a, not just the square root, which is often what happens, I don't know why. I've even seen, I've watched somebody's work where it starts out with this big thing like that, they have 2a on the bottom, like they should, and then this line just starts to shrink every step, it shrinks until it's only underneath the square root. It starts out fine and then it just shrinks, and you don't figure out what's cold, what's what, but the line just keeps shrinking. So 40 squared is 1,600, and 4 times 5 is 20, and 20 times 75 should be 1,500. Okay. Do it yourself and get a calculator out. I'm pretty sure I did this right in my head. So 1,600 minus 1,500 is 100. This is convenient because the square root of 100 is? Nice. It doesn't always work out as nicely, but it does now. Okay. So this really represents, <coughs> we put it all together, it represents two different things. Two different numbers. How do we get those two different numbers? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Negative 40 plus 10. Negative 30. Negative 30, Negative 30 divided by 10. Negative 30 divided by 10, negative 3. Negative 40 minus 10, minus 50. negative 50 divided by 10, negative 5. Well, it might be a lot of work, but it's probably less work than trying to factor that, set each factor equal to 0 and so on. And not only is it, is it probably, like on average, less work than that, uh, there's so many quadratics that factoring won't solve. Only completing the square will solve them. And that's what the quadratic formula is. It's just completing the square already done for you. Or any A, B, and C. Okay. I want you to try it. I want you to try it. Um, number nine. So many. Yeah, it's
way over there. On this left board. negative negative 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is negative 8 squared times 4 times a which is 4 times c which is 1 which is times a again which is 4 the positive 8 there plus or minus the square root that's the fifth square root of 64 minus 16 You should cancel out this 8 and this 8. You should not. But if you can cancel out something from 8 and 4 and 8, all three of them, separated by plus and minus, then go for it. Or you can cancel out a 2 from all of them. So a 4, or a 4 actually, not, just, not even just a 2. So 2 plus or minus root 3 over 2. the square root of 3 to 2, what would that be? What would be some decimal? We don't want that. So you only do that when the top one? When you get a perfect square root, yeah. There are two answers, you're right. But they would, you know, they would come by doing 2 plus root 3 and 2 minus root 3, which would be a decimal. That would be weird. Okay. Let's talk about this. Every time you use the quadratic formula, you're going to have a square root, right? Okay. What kinds of numbers could be in the square root? that? You could have a negative, right? You could have a negative in there. What if there's a negative in there? What kind of solutions are you going to get? Imaginary solutions. What if there's a real number in there? How many are you going to get? Do you have any solutions? Two, and they're going to be real. Is it possible to get one solution? What would have to be in the square root? Zero. Zero in the, in the square root means you don't add and subtract anything. You just take Negative B for 2A. All right, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.